an overview of bonsai uh, in, in three sessions. And uh, so the first session we're going to do is, uh, this first class is going to be uh, up here. History. Uh-oh, is it running out? It's supposed to be dry. A little louder, Lindsay. Okay. We're going to talk about styles, uh, a bonsai, uh, history, and tools. The next class uh, is going to be wiring and uh, basic care. And the last class, uh, the next month, oh, I got a little bling there, is going to be pottery selection, uh, different sizes of bonsai, and um, and, oh, I'm in the wrong area. <laughs> and uh, basic care. Uh, before we get into history, I have a few uh, reference books that would be helpful if you're reading about bonsai or want to learn deeper into bonsai. This is uh, Bonsai Techniques One by John Naka, who uh, was a Southern California author. And he uh, has a lot of uh, information, repotting, and making cuttings and propagation that pertains to this area, which a lot of books are, are back east or you know in Europe. But this is a really good one if you can. It's bonsai techniques by John Naka, and I'll I'll kind of pass it around. This one is uh, bonsai for pleasure by Kenji Murata and. Uh, uh, Takema Takechi. And this one here uh, is really a good one too. It has really good photos of different styles. Uh, it has different techniques of propagation. And so this is a good one. If you could get, you know, like these are not printed anymore, but you could probably get them online. And this is one that I, <laughs> I really kind of, when I was doing bonsai, started bonsai in 1970, I really kind of poured over this book. And it's really a neat one. It's Japanese Art of Miniature Trees and Landscapes by uh, Yuji Yoshimura. And what's kind of neat is that he has a lot of drawings and diagrams in here that give you, that are really pretty, pretty great drawings. And also there's a gloss or kind of a reference manual in the back on different kind of trees. Uh, and like you look up a certain tree like, uh, Japanese quince, and it tells you the Japanese name, bokeh. It'll say uh, how to propagate it, what kind of fertilizer, and everything. So it's really a good full reference book too. Okay. So uh, I think if you could get two out of three, that'd be great. You know, to have a good background uh, reference. Okay, so. Uh, there's different, uh, you know, history uh, references in these bonsai, you know, even bonsai books from Japan. There's different histories of the initial uh, uh, coming together of bonsai. Oh, you know what? Bonsai, do you ever know what bonsai means? No? Tree in a pot? Wow, that's close, yeah. Plot the tree? Uh huh, yeah. Bonsai, sai means to uh, uh, cultivate or grow, and bon means t uh, t a tree or, or a small tree, miniature tree. So it's a miniature tree in a pot. So when we say bonsai, you don't want to say bonsai. Because that's like hail to the emperor or something, you know, you know, when you're driving your plane into a ship. But uh, bonsai is how you pronounce it. So, you know, when you, at least you know how to pronounce it correctly. But anyway, uh, so some sources say that, uh, or most sources say that uh, bonsai originated in China. 
And China has really developed this uh, style of bonsai called penjing. And uh, being a bonsai enthusiast, when we've gone to, throughout China, I always wanted to see the Penjing uh, gardens. And this, I remember one time we were in Beijing, and I asked the lady at the desk, where are their Penjing gardens? And then she goes, where are you talking about? And then I asked someone else, where's the Penjing gardens? And uh, they didn't know that then one lady goes, oh, Penjing. It's like, what, it's the same <laughs> way I pronounced it. I, don't, I didn't get the inflection, so I guess I was saying it wrong. But uh, they have a different way of looking at bonsai. It's uh, more uh, artistic in nature. You know how you, when you see a scroll, a painting of a landscape uh, on a scroll, you see the mountains, and you see the, the trees in there, and uh, maybe a river. Well, Penjing is, it appears that uh, it's more artistic, and it's not as many rules like the Japanese have. So, keep that in mind. Uh, in the, they talk about in the sixth century, the uh, monks would go out into the wild and pick up uh, herbs and plants that they would use in their medicinal uh, concoctions. And so these herbs and plants, they would bring back eventually, instead of getting them fresh every, every day or every other day, they would bring back plants, uproot the plants from the mountains, and bring it back to their little nurseries. Well, these nurseries uh, caught the attention of a lot of the uh, elite people because sometimes these plants they bring back, they're transplanted from the wild, were uh, very interesting. You know, they're maybe grotesque and they maybe look like some of our bonsai today, they're all gnarly. And so the, the social elite would uh, get these people to uh, bring back plants and put it in their palaces and their gardens uh, to view. So this, this concept of digging up plants uh, and put them in containers and pot, not, not marijuana culture, but pot culture uh, developed in China. Okay, so fast forward a little. Uh, the different uh, religious sects went to Japan, went over the ocean there between China and Japan, and they brought with them these ideas of uh, growing plants and cultivating plants. And it kind of took root similarly in Japan where the uh, different uh, emperors or different people and different areas social elite would want uh, those trees in their, in their uh, gardens, in their, in their palaces, their castles. And so uh, it took hold, it started to take hold in Japan. Well, the actual word bonsai didn't really uh, take hold and develop in, in the mainstream of Japan till early to mid 1800s, okay. So up until then they were potted plants, they might be pretty potted plants, but it, it didn't really have that uh, style. Now, after the mid 1800s and in turn of the century, uh, these different styles of bonsai began to develop, okay. In, in the beginning class that I featured, we do uh, five different main styles. One of the 
this jump on. It's a formal upright style, like a big, uh, uh, a big redwood tree. Uh, the next one is shotgun style. It's hard to see from the back. Yeah, Oh, you can move forward. Okay. <laughs> Look out. I'll, I'll make it dark. So, in sweat style. Uh, the next one is uh So uh, we start with the chokan style because it kind of has all the basics. I'm not going to go into the de real detail, but uh, then the chokan style, they all, all these trees and all your trees that you're going to be working on have uh, an apex, okay? And the apex of the tree up here, right? Okay. So the chokan style, the apex falls right above the base of the tree. So it's straight like an arrow. The shotgun style, uh, the apex falls one side or the other of the base of the tree. It slants this way or it can slant the other way. Uh, Moyoki style, the apex falls right in front of the base of the tree. But it has a lot of movement because And wind swept style, the apex is uh, way farther. Kangai is a style where uh, there's two main styles. There's a formal cascade, and then there's an informal cascade. The formal cascade, the eighth of the is at the bottom, right? So uh, this can fall. So the formal kengai falls uh, at the base and kind of comes forward toward the viewer. And the uh, informal cascade goes off to the one side of the other. Okay, so they're, they're kind of the basic framework of bonsai. And a lot of these other styles sort of are modified from that. Now, have you done bonsai before at all? Or? No? Okay. 
have on shoes. You've been doing bonsai for a while. Four years. Okay. And did you guys learn from a teacher or just online? Or? I went to David. Oh, David Wee? Uh huh. Okay. And, and, and Jason Chan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Jason was one of my students. And online and my first. Okay. Okay. Well, that's great. That's good. You know, it's hard, it's hard to learn a four dimensional, three dimensional uh, art form just online. You know, you got to have people to guide you. So, okay, good. Okay, so uh, these are the basic styles uh, of bonsai. Um, you know, of course, there's all kind of uh, intermediary styles. And also things like uh, forest plantings, uh, Yosei Wei forest plantings. Uh, there's a multi-trunk style, a broom style, a lot of different styles. But if you, you know, you could kind of look at that uh, in our handout. There's some extra styles in there. Okay. Well, since we're talking about that, let's look at the handout that we have, those pictures. Yeah, yeah, here. And what's your name? Zach. Zach, okay. So the formal upright, Shokan style. Uh, the Shokan style is uh, down here, kind of a slant where the apex is one side or the other. Moyogi is back and forth. It's not as dramatic on this uh, uh, Chinese quince. Uh, they may not have a bird uh, sweat on here. Kengai, that's an informal Kengai on the next page. Right above that is, uh, you'll see where it's a forest planting. The last uh, page of photos, uh, there's a, it's called Bunjing. Bunjing is a, kind of a, sort of a freeform style of bonsai. And then uh, show, Shohin is uh, kind of miniature bonsai. You know, it's it's supposed to be uh, eight inches or under from the top of the roots to the top of the tree. So it, it incorporates all these other styles, but it's just the size uh, difference. Okay. Okay. You know what? Let's go over this. Uh, and uh, one of our uh, members put this together. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, Here's this the first page. Oh, wait. Yeah, the front page. So what do we look for? Uh, what are characteristics of, of good trees for, for bonsai? Uh, small leaves. Uh, there are dwarf varieties and a lot of different plant material. Uh, dwarf varieties tend to have uh, closer inner nodes together and uh, you could get a better delineation of branches when it's tighter. Uh, you know, it's the only problem with the dwarf species of plants, it just takes longer to develop them. So, you know, if you're good at uh, developing faster growing trees, then you're going to develop your bonsai material quicker and, and not have to do uh, dwarf varieties. Uh, good bark is a, a good thing to consider, uh, like pork bark down or cork, cork bark. Uh, maples. Uh, I just came across a cork bark uh, olive in a nursery and uh, so I'm propagating it now. I have the, the, the new item on the market. Uh, and so, uh, and it should be hardy for your area. You know, I live in uh, Lytle Creek, which uh, we got about uh, at least two feet of snow uh, this year, a little bit more. And uh, so things like bougainvillea, you know, these ficus, they, they really don't work well because I don't have a greenhouse. So uh, I try to get things that could be out in the open and get snowed up. Okay. So there's different kind of 
one gallon plant. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have uh, uh, some trees that you purchased before or not yet? Okay. So okay, that's okay. And you probably have quite a few. Oh. Fifty. Fifty. Okay. <laughs> How about you? I have two. Two. Okay. What are they? They are a black pine and uh, an olive. Oh, okay. Yeah, black pine. We kind of consider black pine kind of a, uh, a type of material that's a little more, uh, it takes a little more work because it takes longer to develop branches and everything. So, but you just, you're just patient, that's okay. And you're young, so it's okay. <laughs> How about you? Do you have trees at home? Yeah, I've got about 25. Oh, okay, okay. And where do you live? Glendale, okay, so it's pretty mild there. But you got snow? No, we didn't start snow, we got some slush. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was fun this year. How about you, do you have some at home? Um, yeah, about 25. Oh, okay. okay. It started out as one. Uh -huh. It's addicting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, so what makes... Uh, uh, a good bonsai. Uh, the rootage is important. Uh, the nebari. nebari. Rootage uh, is very important. You know, you, you may have a tree you start with and it may not have the best rootage, but you know, you, there's different techniques to, to add roots or air layer roots on. You could graft roots, another tree in there to make roots on one side. But rootage is really important because it makes the, uh, the tree look stable and strong, and it makes it look like it's not gonna fall over, you know, in a windstorm. So rootage is a big thing. Taper is the second thing paper uh, from the base of the tree up to the apex and uh, you know not every tree is perfect uh, sometimes we get a, what's called a reverse taper it, it comes up like this and then it bulges a little and then it goes back and so <coughs> sometimes we can alleviate that by uh, either carving that reverse taper out uh, we can uh, kind of tilt the plant in one direction or the other as a new front, so it doesn't show as much. But uh, reverse taper is kind of a bad thing, so we kind of try to soften that as much as possible. Let's see one of these examples for taper. has pretty good uh, trunk size and it maybe this it could be an upright or it could be a windswept and it, it has good taper going up to the outer extremities so you know, that's, that's pretty nice yeah. that, that would be okay for roots. and then uh, now an apex on a tree uh, Oh, let me let me draw this a little bit. An apex on a tree on an older specimen usually has more of a crown apex than this. It's not only a pointy. So that's, that little subtle uh, adjustment in the apex can make your tree look older or younger. Even a uh, chokan style, which is uh, formal upright, I have one at home that the crown is more like this. And when you do that, it looks older. You know, if you go to uh, a national forest or these forests out here, 
and you start looking at the different trees, the ones with these beautiful branching coming out, and you can see the apical top when it's when it's crowned, uh, it looks much older. It looks and it'll be on older trees. So it would be kind of a good study to look at. Uh, I'm not going to go over branch placement because there's uh, in in Japanese. Uh, well, in bonsai, the term bonsai is Japanese. It uh, there's a lot of different rules that we go by to uh, make the structure uh, proper, uh, branch placement. The the lower the branch on the tree, usually it's a longer branch, a thicker branch. up the tree, they get uh, shorter and closer together. This is just a natural you know, phenomenon for <laughs> over trees. They get closer together. Okay. Uh, I was trying to uh, and, uh, and most bonsai trees we don't have really a to the viewer, like maybe this this might be the, the front over here, and this crown goes toward the viewer. So if you have a, a tree that you're training, and it's going every which way, and then it, the top finally goes like over here, well, you may want to turn it around so it goes toward the viewer. That, that's, that's really important. It's like reading, reading your audience. Okay, let's see. Uh, boy, there's a lot of little little rules here. Um, there's this thing called uh, uh, bar branches. Anybody know what bar branches? Bar branches are where you may have a, a branch here. So we try to get rid of one of them. And most often the case is that we try to get rid of the one that's maybe inside the curve. Take the ones that are outside of the, of the truck. Okay. Uh, and eye pokers are another important thing. An eye poker is a, a branch that comes right out at the viewer, straight out at the viewer. So, just to change that, we just wire it one side or the other, or we could tilt the tree or it's, you know, in a different direction. So it's not like pointing a finger at your viewer. Okay. How are we doing on time? What's a pigeon breast? What's a pigeon breast? Okay. A pigeon breast. Let me draw this. Say this one here. This is like wind switch. This is the front, say, for this particular tree. If we look at it from the side, if we look at it from this side, it might look like this. is the first big uh, sweeping movement of the trunk. You say the word pigeon, pigeon breast on this tree. It kind of like bulges like a pigeon. And so that might be like right in here. So uh, hopefully your tree, that first bend goes toward the back. And then build a pigeon breast in the front. 
Does that make sense? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's so, your was tatter or something? Yeah, it's uh, it's when a first like the tree could move back and forth. Like I'm, I'm the tree, and you're the viewer. It could go back and forth like this. Okay, it could go forward, backwards. You have different movement. But your first bend coming out of the out of the soil shouldn't go like this toward the viewer. So it should be either on the side. Yeah, either the side or back. Yeah. So you get you don't want to have a pigeon breast in the front. Okay. That's a good question. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about pots later. Um, this is kind of a good thing. Uh, just past the pictures, it says a hierarchy of bonsai trees. And uh, when bonsai first began in uh, Japan, it was uh, the, these two main trees, juniper and pine. Those were like the trees they used for bonsai. And it could be five needle pine, could be black pine, you know, there's a lot of different kind of pines. Uh, but those are the two, and in fact, the word bonsai incorporates those two words in it. I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not a calligrapher, but those two words are in, intertwined in the word bonsai pine tree and juniper. So that's why they're kind of top of the list as some of the ones that are preferred. Uh, I would say traditionally preferred. But now that, uh, you know, bonsai has really uh, evolved and there's a lot more interest in different things instead of just traditional things. These other things like deciduous trees, you know, uh, elms and maples, flowering trees, uh, ume, flowering cherries, uh, bokeh is the quince, and fruiting trees uh, like quince and crab apples. They're, they've gone to uh, such popularity that it's almost like the pine and junipers are kind of not as prominent nowadays uh, as bonsai. So uh, that's kind of the background to that. Lindsay, is it the same in Japan? Is it the same in Japan? Popular? Yeah. Is oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, that's why the pine and juniper is, is like the constant type of material they use, but all these other ones are really kind of almost taking over, you know, and, and developing the popularity. Like I'm, I have some pines, you know, and has some junipers, but I like deciduous trees myself. That's my passion, and flowering trees. So uh, that's what I uh, are my favorite type of material to work on. But, but you know, everybody's different. So okay, so. The next thing, uh, I want to show you some tools. This is a, uh, a carrying case for uh, culinary artists uh, for their knives. But uh, the main tools that you want to get uh, start out with would be some kind of pruner. Uh, it could be, they call it a bypass pruner, which means that the blades bypass each other. Okay, bypass pruner. You could do some kind of thinning shear, which can get way inside uh, between little branches. And they come in various kind of things. You know, this is a thinning shear to uh, scissor, uh, hasami style. Uh, a must is a type of maybe a wire cutter, a wire cutter. This is for heavier wire and uh, this is for a little bit lighter wire. Okay, those are important. And uh, one of the tools, one of the tools that, uh, shh, <laughs> one of the tools that, uh, 
Well, one of the tools that are real important is the branch cutter. And this is also called a concave cutter. What this does, uh, to give you an idea of why you feel this is important, is that when you remove a branch, You say we want to remove that branch, okay? Well, this concave cutter, the concave cutter cuts into the hardwood. So if you look at the tree and, you, and this concave cutter kind of made a cut like this, it removes some of that hardwood. If you just cut like this, you know, flush to the bark, the cambium will grow over that and create a buff. But when you concave it, it, it peels over flush or, or flush and it makes it uh, like it had never been there. So uh, that's what this concave cutter is all about. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else? That's really, you know, pliers are good to have, some kind of pliers. You, when you're bending the tree with the wire on it, bending a tree with the wire on it, you could bend the wire uh, and the branch together with a, a nice uh, pair of pliers. So those are the main ones. There's all different kind of tools too that, you know, there's, there's also this uh, spherical concave cutter. It makes more of a, a little bit smoother gouge into the trunk, spherical concave cutter. Uh, that's kind of handy sometimes to have. But uh, I think that's all we have today. I think, let's see, yeah. Let's, uh, we'll stop there. Uh, next time, if I know, there's a, there's a list going around that someone could sign it, the people that are in this class. I'll make sure you have uh, wire and we'll get a branch. And we'll do a little wiring next time. And uh, get that down and make sure you know how to wire properly. Use some extra pointers maybe. And, uh, and then we'll talk about basic care. Okay? So that's all for tonight. Is it the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah, next meeting uh, will be uh, wiring and basic care. So, it, the people enrolled, did you get a chance to ride? Oh, maybe I'll just call out.